I am this morning uh, declaring that we will be doing a mandatory evacuation. Katrina, as most of you know, has become a monster of a hurricane, a Category 5 storm. We advise people that this city has been destroyed. 80% of New Orleans flooded, 80% of New Orleans underwater right now. We're talking about a storm that is impacting at, the, at this very minute four different states along the Gulf Coast. The Salvation Army plans to serve 400,000 meals a day to Katrina's victims and rescue teams. Ten years ago, the Salvation Army responded to the greatest natural disaster this country has ever seen, Hurricane Katrina, which bore down on the Mississippi and Louisiana coasts. The Salvation Army responded with love, compassion, and practical aid. Thousands of officers, volunteers, and employees were mobilized. It's my privilege to share with you some of those stories. Well, we're going down to towards New Orleans uh, to try to help some people down there. The hurricanes came through and left pretty much a mess, as we understand. We don't know a lot about it yet. No, not many communications. The Army has a long history of service to this community, you know, dating back to the 1880s. But you know, Katrina certainly pr provided a significant impact. Uh, to us and our ability to provide uh, those services. Every facility uh, that the Salvation Army operates in New Orleans was impacted in, in some way, uh, whether it was wind, water, uh, what have you, uh, and up to and including our uh, Adult Rehabilitation Center, which uh, played a significant role, that facility did, uh, in helping the Army to, um, to respond. So all of our facilities were impacted, but you know, the beauty of uh, what the Salvage Army was able to do, part of the beauty was that, you know, amidst that tragedy, amidst the, our facilities being flooded and without power and what have you, the Army was able to find a way to sort of push through that uh, to provide uh, the services that the community needed. It's nighttime, I want you to sleep. If it's lunchtime, I want you to eat. I want you to take care of yourself so you don't become part of the problem. You're part of the solution. Next thing we knew was cracking levy and the water was coming. And then we started looking at the cars, the water coming up above the cars. And then all of a sudden you see no cars at all. I mean, it was just water. As it was coming in, people were still coming saying, I got to get in, let me in. And I'm saying, I don't have anything for you. I've got enough in the facility, but I couldn't send them to the Superdome. I mean, little children, a six-week-old baby, and it was a six-month-old baby, and the 88-year-old lady that they, the son had carried on his back, and all she had on her was a house coat. And I, I couldn't turn them out. We, we never actually had a, a head count on anyone. Some tell me that there was 310, and to me, I wasn't into numbers. It was in how, how can I take care of them? How can I feed them? How can I, I give them a liquid? One meal was, we were out of food at that time, so we had canned peaches. And we had to go open those peaches, they're pop top. We had to count out six peaches. And he told us to pour that little bit of juice, everybody got about an inch of juice. And they were told to chew those peaches up really good. And he said, make sure they all drink that juice. Shortly after that, I walked back to our room and I just sat on the edge of the bed and I just said, God, I can't take it anymore. Uh, I had reached my limit, responsible for all these people. During this whole ordeal, th there was times when you felt uh, God's presence uh, at night with no lights and you heard people singing and you heard people praying. And then there was other times you felt just kind of empty. You felt like, is anyone listening? Is there anyone there? At night, I'd go up and flash the helicopters, but nobody would stop. I had one flashlight with two batteries. Uh, it's easy to take the easy road. It's easy to, uh, to not, not do anything. But when you're there and God says, you've got to take care of my children, are we going to run from it? Or 
are we going to stand the test? When we were leaving, the people lined up in the hallway and hugged me and just cried and said, thank you for what you did for us. Thank you for saving my life. And I, I felt like that wasn't us, it was, it was the Lord that did it. Across the Gulf Coast, among people who have lost much and suffered much, we are seeing that same spirit, a core of strength that survives all hurt, a faith in God no storm can take away, and a powerful American determination to clear the ruins and build better than before. When dawn broke today, the scope of the devastation across three states became far clearer. In parts of Mississippi, entire neighborhoods destroyed. The news were there, uh, making a report of how Biloxi had been hit. And the reporter is talking to the camera and he's talking about the devastation, but he's also talking about families who are just lost, who are just totally bewildered. They don't know what to do. It's over 90 degrees, heavy humidity. And he looks across and he says, there's the Salvation Army. And our canteen had just pulled up and was serving, and the line was gradually getting longer and longer. And that was a wonderful moment for, not just for me to see, but for the nation to see. It's a tough situation, but we are getting help out here slowly and surely, and a lot of the residents are going to be happy about that again today as they look for their possible second meal again. Yesterday, they were really happy. They had uh, they were serving, serving some beef stew and water, and they had bananas and cereal, and, and, and that meant the world to them. It, it certainly, uh, certainly was a very good day for them. I just saw masses of people sitting on tops of rubble, you know, the day after, and babies still in the diaper they had on, no change. 100 degrees, nowhere to go, no toilet, no food, no water. But I got out of the vehicle and I said, where is the Salvation Army? And the lady said, you're standing on it. The weather people, they did not tell us uh, what to actually expect. I mean, everything was all destroyed, you know, everywhere, debris everywhere. They had cleared a path on Howard Avenue and the Salvation Army had set up one of their red vans and I was, you know, I was really surprised that the Salvation Army was there the day after the storm handing out hot dogs and chips and in any other way they could help. There was a mass of people around there because a lot of people hadn't eaten for like two days if they didn't have something. Most people's places were, you know, like whoosh, gone with the wind. Right outside here, there, there used to be a place called Yankee Stadium and that's where everybody was. The Army actually purchased this land uh, the Thursday prior to the storm. Uh, the documents were signed and finalized uh, on the Army's end uh, Thursday prior to uh, August the 29th. So at that time when we were buying this section of land we had in mind a croc center, uh, a future site, a future home for the Army. We had no idea it would become the, the lifeboat that it became. We have always said that you know we serve at the pleasure of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, now we've been put to the test. Will you really go anywhere I ask you to go? Uh, will you follow me to a region that has been devastated? I, I have met with city leaders in two of the cities. Uh, and the promise I have made to them is that the Salvation Army was here before the storm and will be here after the storm. You expect to see some new building and new business and it's not here and then you get here to the Croc Center it's like, wow. You know, it's amazing, it looks amazing. It's a huge change from a dome in the middle of a parking lot and it's overwhelming. I'd seen the blueprints before I left. I mean, I knew it was happening. I'd seen the blueprints, but to couldn't imagine what it is. And then walking through and seeing everybody, seeing the kids playing in the pool and my kid running in the daycare and people working out in the gym. Uh, 
just give me some, give, you know what I mean? It brought some joy to me to know that people have this here where there's still some disheartening images. Nonetheless, amazing things went on on this property without this croc center. Like a lot was done in a temporary dome in an 18-wheeler kitchen and under two sets of bleachers. Like, priceless. To get to where it's at today, that had to happen first. Armani, picking. Don't look yet. <laughs> All right, let's put the blindfolds back on. The Salvation Army Croc Center, it can be the center of a person's life. It's a spiritual center. Uh, we have arts and education and music and a fitness center, a gymnasium, an indoor swimming park. Uh, you, you come away from uh, things such as responding to Katrina, uh, being more well prepared. Indeed, you're, you're overwhelmed and exhausted, uh, but you also find, uh, find it within yourself and the organization finds within itself uh, the, the means to, you know, to move forward. Our Center of Hope really uh, provides the foundational framework for everything uh, that we do. We have a four-story uh, facility uh, that uh, provides services to people in need uh, every single day, whether it be sheltering or the provision of food, uh, assistance to, in uh, regarding uh, vocational training, life skills, those kinds of things. It's wonderful because we are able to assist the people with the rental and utility, assisting the families with the overnight emergency shelter. It's wonderful that the people are able to go down to the ARC and shop once again. We are recovering. While we were closed, the people that do the same type of work we do, um, they kept rolling. So it's been a struggle for us to get our, our customers back, get the men back in the center. Currently we have about 52 men, which is the highest we've had in a long time. There's always a need in the community for, to help people with recovering, uh, you know, for drug or alcohol addictions. All the guys that are here, they, they're here for the right reason. When they graduate, they leave, and they come back and let us know how successful they still are. The people on the Gulf Coast tell me on a weekly basis, if it wasn't for the Salvation Army, I don't know what we would have done. They said we went out searching uh, for something and the Salvation Army was there. We couldn't find anyone else, but you guys were there. The Salvation Army is an organization made up of people. Without our people trying to do the most good, we, we wouldn't survive.